Just so you know, this is not part 2 to the Sonic.exe fan game tutorial series. While this is an extra video, while you wait for part 2 of that tutorial series, because it's taking a lot longer to plan than I thought, and because I was in North Carolina for 10 days, I wasn't able to work on it. So while you wait for that, here's a shorter video that is a separate tutorial thing, but will help a lot of people. Hopefully. If you are not familiar with the Sonic.exe one last round data select sky effect, then here's a short clip of what it looks like. And I know that in one of Luigi Kid's recent videos, he shows off the brand new latest sky for the Sonic.exe one last round data select screen. That uses the same effect, just has some different sprites with some mouths and stuff in the sky. I'll show a quick clip of that real quick. Hey there, bros. Listen to the music. Look at the background. Look at Tails. This is pretty shocking, isn't it? So today, I'm just going to be showing you how to make that effect. And something else I should note, that the sky in there uses that depth of field kind of effect, where it's different sprites scrolling at different speeds. I'm not going to be doing that as I'm just going to be using the Sonic.exe data select screen from that older tutorial of mine which only had the single image that scrolled. If you do already have it set up where they'll move at different speeds then you can still apply this effect as this is just some color effects and some perspective effects. So getting right into this as you can see this is the Sonic.exe fan game from the previous video with I mean, we didn't do anything to these, but we created it here. I just copy and pasted the data select frame from that older tutorial onto here, which right now, as you can see, it is fully functional. You can't do Eggman, can't do Knuckles. When you do Tails, if you press enter and wait a little bit, it takes a few seconds for the laugh and the black screen to pop up. If you want to go make this, then check out the older tutorial. While it is a really long tutorial, I know because I didn't plan any of that. It's like a bad tutorial, but it does still work if you want to sit through that and watch it. But maybe in the future one day I'll have a better, a better and shorter tutorial of how to make the same data select screen. So as you can see right here, I have a screenshot of the one last round data select screen here. You can see the sky is different with these kind of swervy effects to them so we're going to be using this as a reference image now you can see these are just the single images and don't scroll at different speeds you can still apply this effect as i said earlier even if you have them moving at different speeds so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we'll do them to both of these eventually but for one of them just for now you want to go to effect right here in the properties and this little display options tab go to edit and I know I have a lot of shaders here and effects. Uh, there'll be a link in the description to get all these effects as not all of these are default with Click Team Fusion. A lot of these were downloaded off the web. So I will get a link in the description to download all of those. But once you get all of these or if you already have all of these, then you want to go into the shader pack tab here, go to coloring, go to channel depth, press OK. And in the green tab here, we want to set this to 6 and notice the color change here. I'll zoom in more so you can see. Compare it, compare these two together and notice their color changes. This one now looks more red and looks a bit more like this one down here. Except you'll notice the back here is a bit darker than up here. The effects sadly will not help us do this and we have to manually change this. So what we want to do is go into the sprite here, go to the transparency color, now depending on the color of your sprite sheet, which it was this blue here for me, that'll be what the transparency color is. Obviously it doesn't matter what we set it to anymore. So what we can do is just select the background here, press to not show it, and you'll now see the sky here is transparent. And we want to do the same thing to the other one over here as well. So go to effect, shader pack, coloring, channel depth, and then change green here to six. And then we go in here, transparency, we'll do show for now, select this color down here, click to not show it, and then they'll be transparent. But then you'll notice tra they're transparent and we'll have this white background here. Now how do we fix this? What we want to do is select the frame, 
and click on background go to other oh well, actually I can't see the thing hold up maybe you should also just take a screenshot of this right here as you will need it so go to color here go to other go to select and then just select the color down here so that way anything that was transparent before will now show here on screen and you may not see it over here but don't worry as long as it's in the frame then it'll show so as you can see now the background will stay this darker blackish blue down here the sky is a bit more redder around and while and it may not be a I mean it might but I don't want to call it a perfect recreation you can look at it and you can see it is a really accurate result so it may not be completely perfect but it is the closest we're probably going to get unless you want to go really in depth and recolor all of these to these exact colors here but this is just an easier way to do it oh also if anyone didn't notice I switched to these and the data select text as I messed that up last time because I forgot what it looked like but if you looked at the clip from earlier or if you know what the one last round screen looks like you'll notice that the clouds kind of have the swirly effect to them to make them look a lot more like clouds if you look at this screenshot here you can kind of see that effect in action up here you'll see how it kind of swerves like this this like kind of line that swerves up and down that effect is easy to create but it can only be done in click team that I know of so what you want to do is double click to get and to create a new object or you just right click and go to insert object and we want to look for perspective which looks like this right here this is a default object with click team fusion so it should automatically be in here if it's not in there then just go to the manager over here and then just type perspective and you can see right here it's a, usually a default object with fusion it should already be there but if not just look it up and select it and install it you just want to double click it here and put it not on this very top of the frame because this object here basically affects anything that is under it so what you want to do is put it on the layer where your sky is which if you followed that previous tutorial you'll know to put things on layers and most likely your sky will be on the bottom layer so you want to make sure it's below the select boxes here and the text and all the characters and stuff so that way it doesn't give them the swirl effect too because we don't want that and you'll notice this isn't covering the entire screen so what we want to do is make sure it covers the exact proportions of the screen you can make it a bit wider if you want but try not to make it too wide as that will mess up the effect a little bit because this object the effect amount it applies can depend on the size of where it is so the best thing to do just drag that out to the max size of the frame and when we go in here you'll notice it's created this kind of paranorma effect here as it does look a bit more 3d and this does look pretty cool but it's not the effect we're looking for now you can play with all the different effects in here you can try oh you can try perspective here which does swirl it a little bit this actually does give a little bit of that effect to the clouds but it is not the effect we're looking for the effect we're looking for is the sine wave effect and if we try to look at that you'll see it is a little bit messed up here at the start hello this is future sub studio so after realizing what I just did it was awful compared to the original thing so I'm going to show the way better way to recreate it so this is what it would look like right here you can see this is I mean actually I'm not even sure if I'm gonna keep that original clip in I'm probably just gonna cut that out and put this in so I had done this previously I had done like the sky effect but it was a bad version of the sky effect so this one is way better as you can see so it's with the perspective object all the way down here but scaled down pretty far so that way the center point is down to here so that way down here will not like scroll around or like not swirl around as much as the top will and the zoom value here I changed that to 8 maybe it'll still look good at 10 that actually looks better at 10 keep it at 10 set it down here I moved the sky down just a little bit you don't have to do that but just to cover up the area down there 
make sure the center point is kind of down there by the sky and you can get this amazing looking sky effect and obviously with if you have the tiles moving at different speeds the tiles the clouds if you have the clouds moving at different speeds then it's gonna look way better that should be the end of the video but in case it isn't i'll just keep letting it play out but in case it is the end then goodbye and i'll see you all next time in the next video